talk about Malayalam cinema. But I am very passionate about Malayalam and also Malayalam cinema. So I hope that qualifies me to talk about this subject. I am basically an engineer, studied in Palakkad Engineering College and we used to compete with uh, Trichur Engineering College in all the theatre festival, youth festival, everything. So last 10 years, I have actually moved from hardcore engineering. I used to be in the Silicon Valley into entrepreneurship and running a company and things like that. I've come back and then spending my time in theater, films, and some technology initiatives. So Malayalam cinema has been my main area of work for the last 10 years. So this is I'm actually trying to share some of my experiences or observations to you, with you and hoping that it will inspire you to contribute something to this subject about which I'm passionate. Thanks few slides are a quick run through of uh, the history of Malayalam cinema. The first film was in 1930, Vigada Kumar, most of you know, there was a film called Celluloid last year, a couple of years back. So eight years later, first talkie came. The first outdoor shoot was Harish it's, There's a lot of uh, 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 debate about the point. First color film came in 1961. First real uh, a, a quality Malayalam film came in, in 1954, that is Neela Kuil, which won the first national award for Malayalam. And 1965, that's the year I was born. So all these things are before I was born. So in 1965, this was the first South Indian film which won the President's World Bank for the best feature film. And you can see that in the years, 70s and 80s, Achori Ambu, Padayotam and My Dear Putishatan has actually made us really proud so the 7 mm and the 3D. The first Indian film was in our language. And in 1970, that's where the new wave Malayalam cinema started. In Kerala, the film, fest, film society movement started. It started with uh, one man, Adur Gopalakrishnan, who was a graduate of the Film Institute of Pune. He came back and he started this uh, uh, society called Chitra Lekha, and it spread there are more than 100 film societies across Kerala. Even now, uh, those film societies are they're not as active as in those days. And those film societies actually further uh, extended or experimented by John Abraham uh, in 80s. That's called Odessa movement. So in 70s, there's a lot of great movies which came out. So Adur's first film, Swayambaram, Aravindan's first film, Uttarayanam, and M.T. was the Nair's first film, Nirmalya. All are highly um, recognized films of 70s, and there are many other films also. Uh, I think uh, Olo Untiro, first realistic movie in Malayalam. Um, K.P. Kumar, and actually, debut film was in 70s. Uh, K.R. Mohan, and who passed away recently, his film was in 70s. Adur, I think I don't have to talk much. I think he has, uh, with his very deep and layered and perfect works which he has created, all these films, uh, this is not a complete list. He has, uh, he has a place in Indian cinema, not only in Malayalam cinema, Indian cinema, he has uh, accomplished that. And uh, G. Aravindan is also considered as one of the greatest filmmakers in India, uh, even though he uh, by 80s, he, he left us. So these are all the films we have uh, from Aravindan. Even though John didn't do a lot of films, through his uh, interaction with uh, his ideas and his interaction with the society, he has created a much bigger impact than uh, directly than through his films. His Ammari, and when we were doing engineering, that was a, one of the biggest cultural activity which was happening in, in India. It, it connected all of us. Uh, actually, even our college magazine had an impact of that. That was the first crowd-funded film 
he really wanted to break all the hierarchies. So he was really a revolutionary in that respect. So 19, uh, 1988, we have Shaji and Karun Spiravi. This is probably the most honored or recognized Malayalam film in the history of Malayalam cinema. It has all the major um, awards which you can think of in Cannes and Edinburgh, Locarno, Chicago. Uh, and I think the, the sale also, it has gone to a lot of uh, territories, international territories. It has collected, uh, you know, is still collecting royalties from those places. <clears throat> okay, so in this recap, you can see that uh, in, in 50 years, Malayalam has become fourth largest industry in India. That is with just 3% of the population. And we were really dominating national and international recognition, whether it is national awards, panorama selections, or international film festivals. And we, were, we are known for realism, subtlety, content, that also of social relevance, and talent, the performances. So people really wanted to come and be part of Malayalam cinema uh, to, to, to get that experience, all artists, all crew members. 1980s and early part of 90s. This is, we, we used to say that, I mean, we can clearly say that it is the golden age of Malayalam cinema. So it is because of the talent we had, the talented directors in the parallel cinema area, in the commercial field, and also in the uh, mid path. I mean, Bharatan Padmaraj and KG George Mohan, Lenin Rajendran. So similarly, writers, today that is one area where we have so much uh, dearth of uh, writing skills. Actors, they were not stars, they were actors. You can see that, I mean, in Balankena, Bharat Gopi, Nirmudi Venu, Venu Nagavalli, Achankunya. So you can see that there is a uh, wide spectrum of actors for any character. It's so easy to pick uh, an actor because so many, so many experienced, good performers were available to you those, during those days. Actresses. Today, I think it's mostly actresses are, I mean, the, the female artists are you and throw. They come act for a few uh, uh, years, and then uh, they are replaced. But in those days, all these senior actresses, they had the stardom, they had the popularity, whether it is Sri Vidya, Jai Bharati, Sharada, Jalaja, all these people. So this is the height. We basically, this was the pinnacle of success in Malayalam cinema, where quality was there, commercial success was there, there were 1,800 uh, uh, theaters, you know, profitable business, majority. I mean, it's not all, all films. So when things were really hitting the nadir after the pinnacle which we talked about, so we had this superstar culture. We, things were weak. It is easy to be manipulated. So we used to look at uh, neighboring states and you know make fun. Look at them, they're pouring uh, milk on uh, the, the stars and having cutouts and stuff like that. Is there anything wrong with these people? That's how we used to think. And same thing, same wrong thing is with us also. Now, our mental situation is all can, all needs to be questioned. <clears throat> we have created fan clubs, which who, who is instrumental in making a movie successful or I mean, you boo the op opponent's uh, films in theater. You know, that kind of uh, entertainment they started. Associations. There is, stars have created an association. Every other association is uh, under their clutches. They will decide. Earlier, we had, I mean, we have seen so many talent, so much talent, and uh, th those filmmakers were deciding what will happen in Malayalam cinema. But now, suddenly, uh, the stars and their agents and their people will decide what kind of movies will be made, what we should see, and what we should like. And then they have the agents, whether it is television or outstation, in all these places, even the government. Government used to basically give the awards, and finally, even if the award is not given to a, a star, but for the award function, they want a star's presence. Government has also started aping what the television channels were doing. So Malayalam cinema in 2000 to 2010 was almost like this. We were clearly seeing what others are doing, 
there is solution there. But we were instead of instead we were basically trying to <clears throat> hide ourselves without doing the right things. We had all the bad things. Nepotism. If you take 20 new actors, 90% of them will be somebody, somebody, right? So you can just count that. At least there are uh, 15 well-known uh, star kids in our industry. No new talent. Barrier to entry is so high, it's not easy to get in. So how can a new talent actually come into the industry? Gender discrimination. That, is all, that was always bad. Very first film, Vigata Kumar, Kumaran, the actress, Rosie, she had to run away from Kerala because she was actually uh, doing the character of a higher caste woman. So it became worse. We all know what happened last year. It ended up in physical attack on, on a woman. So woman-centric films are not there. Where are the Panjagnis and Nagakshadangal and all? Not in this decade. I mean, you know, last two decades. And uh, <clears throat> there are no women with the satellite rate or stardom. Caste discrimination is the same thing. Rosie's case applies to this also. We have a director, Dr. Biju, who has basically got three national awards and several international recognitions. He has never been recognized locally. So caste is a major factor here. TRP-driven television. Television has got this weird way of deciding what we like. They have some very small samples, some machines kept in some houses, and they say that this is what you like. This is what you are going to show. This is what you should like, you know, uh, appreciate. Finally, what happened? We stopped, uh, most of us probably stopped te watching television. It has come to that stage. Now, since they are paying for the movies, Theatres are anyway not doing that well. Since they are paying mostly for the, uh, the films, they are going to decide what kind of films should be made. So you can clearly understand what kind of comedy programs, you know, in the evening we see. They want the films also be like that. So quality suffers. 2002, not any of the stars in Malayalam, but it was Shakila who acted in most number of films. She acted in 22 films in one year. 2002. So 2002 to 2010, soft porn movies, mimicry kind of movies, I mean, you know, anything standing straight, they want to uh, smash it. Only imitations or basically uh, uh, vulgar imitations of uh, original stuff is, you know, it, that is the only thing which will work in, 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 this, in this industry. <clears throat> Larger than life characters, castist, chauvinist kind of character who will abuse women, who will abuse uh, lower caste people. That's the kind of characters, you know, started coming out. People, I just put this slide to counter one point. A lot of people say that this is what is happening. This is the technology is changing. The world is changing. This is, nobody wants your old stuff. This is the, uh, it is, it is, we cannot go back to that old, good old, good old days. But in Marathi, what is happening? They just have to open their eyes and look at what is happening in Marathi. Till 2003, 2004, when Schwaz got the uh, um, best film award, national award, before that, they used to have one film a decade or one film a later one film a year. Then it became 10 film a year. Now it is 100 films a year. It is same film collecting eight crore uh, in, the, in the theater and getting all the national awards, panorama selection, and the international recognition at the same time. Where we were in 80s, they are almost there in, in, the, in the current time. So I just wanted to basically say that it is not impossible. How they achieved it, we, it is a textbook case. How their society, how the, their government, how their cast and crew, I mean, the, the artists and technicians, how they achieved it. It is, a, it is anybody to go and check and learn. Fortunately, uh, from this Nadir, we are slowly starting to you know, come out. A lot of youngsters like Raji Ravi to Ashikabu, I mean, I don't want to read all the names, have started creating refreshing 
content focused, making focused films in to, after 2010, and we have got a lot of uh, audience coming back to the theater, that kind of a situation. Suddenly there is a fresh lease of life. Number of screens now have increased. It has gone down below 1,000, now it is more than 1,000. 10% of it is multiplex, but it is still not very high. I'll tell you more uh, uh, later. New crop of actors have come up, other than the stars, established stars. Also, there is quite a good attempt to re reviving the lost glory in the parallel stream or artistic uh, films. So inexpensive, inexpensive uh, digital production gears, DSLR cameras and stuff like that. Crowdfunding and startup approach to making uh, content. They, it has brought in a lot of people like Sudevan, who won the state award for crime number 89, Sanal Kumar Shashidharan, who won the uh, Rotterdam award, Jayan Charyan, Sijin Babu, Geetu Mohandas, Vidhu Vincent, K.R. Manoj, Vipin Vijay, all these people, along with the veteran Shajian Karun, Dr. Biju, etc., they are also continuing to make a great work. Now, last few years, we are seeing state level as well as in national level as, and in the international festival level, some of the significant awards, Rotterdam Award for Sanal, Berlin Award for Jairaj, a lot of these things. So, things are not that bad, things are in beginning to turn around. Along with all these people, it is a collective effort, audience is involved, everybody is involved. This is an area where I have tried to contribute. These are the four Malayalam films which uh, I produced. Uh, in, in, in some I acted also. So this is a biopic of a popular Malayalam poet called P. Kunjiraman Nair. This is Papilio Buddha. He is about uh, the real, one real political or a human rights problem Kerala has. That's about the life of uh, uh, Dalits and uh, tribal people. Janaki is about a street child, and Sufi Paranyakada is basically an adaptation of a Malayalam novel. After a long time, a novel was uh, adapted into uh, a movie. So these four films have fetched 15 state awards and festival selections in Berlin, Montreal, Durban, BFI, IFFK, and Trinidad, Tobago. I also had uh, lucky to actually work with a lot of youngsters in the Crowdfunded films like Oral Pokam and Kartu with the Chavar. Oral Pokam, we basically uh, uh, shot in uh, uh, Himalaya. Um, so we, we shot it for 70 days. The entire movie was done for 19 lakh rupees collected from uh, people. Kartu with the Chavar is based on an engineering college student from REC called P. Rajan who went missing during the emergency. It's about his. Uh, um, that case, the inquiries and uh, the politics of that time. So currently I'm also you know, experimenting with uh, content outside Kerala. This is uh, a pan-Indian English uh, uh, film called Painting Life. This has got actors from 10 different Indian states. Also did a Marathi film because Marathi really wanted to see what that uh, space, how they are actually achieving this kind of success for artistically good films. So this is a Marathi film, Shutter. It's a remake of a Malayalam film. And also a, a, a content for internet called Brown Nation. So it's a sitcom. It's available in Netflix. It was shot in New Jersey. <clears throat> so now what going forward? So if any of these things actually hurts you or it uh, troubles you, and you want to do something about it, I think uh, we should, because as Gandhi said, if we want to see some change, we better do something about it. So I think here we have a lot of artists, technologists, and many of you, I'm sure, are going, are going to be entrepreneurs. We need all these three people to really make use of video on demand. Internet is the thing, so everybody is going to have the content on their phone. From their phone, we can basically throw it to a projector or to, or to the TV uh, or watch in the t uh, your tab or a computer. So that is going to be big. And uh, all these big players, YouTube and uh, you know, all these people are not going to be caring about our language. So we better have a solution for, for our language 
our own platform. Animation, there is a lot of talent in this part of the world. Kerala has got a lot of talent. And if we can, uh, society and the government can do the right thing, uh, we can achieve a lot of things there. Virtual reality is another thing. So the watching something detached from the screen is going to be over. We will have to have very submersive kind of uh, uh, experience going forward. Close-ups, cuts, all those things are, have to change. The syntax of film making has to change. Film viewing has to change. This is a level playing ground. Talented people from this part of the world can make a huge difference. Short films, internet content. We, we, we should have a startup approach. We, if we can do technology startups, why can't we do media startups? Why is that we cannot work for equity and hope for making money later? If we can do it in technology, we should be able to do it in, in art also. So that kind of culture we, has to come, come up here. We need to build more theaters. As I said, 1,000 theaters in a state like this is very less. In India, rest of India, 6% is the multiplexes per million, six multiplexes per million. In the US, it is 100. We don't have even three. So we have, we have been blackmailed for two decades by some of these con men. But there is so much opportunity out here to make money. People, we should encourage people to build theaters, build multiplexes, and, and make money. And world is flat. There is a big national level market. There is a big multiplex chain out there. There is, uh, there is a international market. There is a lot of interest for Indian content. So we should be able to tap that. And then finally, society. Government means no, no, it is our society. We are actually doing a great job of festival. IFFK has got more than 10,000 people. I think it's very well participated festival in the world. And uh, we are doing a fairly good job, except in few years we have wrong juries there. But I think we need to continue doing a good job in that area. Malayalam is one industry which kept collecting taxes even when Number of films almost reached to 50, and Malayalam was in deep trouble, but still our government was collecting taxes from us. So entertainment tax, when Tamil is not doing it, there is no reason for us to do it. Subsidy, we have to study how Marathi actually came up with some of the glorious films in the last couple of decades using this technique. Wide release. This is anti-competitive. It is illegal. Government has to step in and then break that, make sure that our films are released widely. Government is already planning to build 100 theaters across uh, the, the, the state, and hopefully that can be used to create a good cinema culture here. Education, there is a Kairanarayan Film Institute, and I think every school, every college should be taught filmmaking, because filmmaking is almost like Typing in all olden days, people should know editing, people should know how to use camera because everybody is going to roam around with a camera. So we should bring that in the syllabus. We should be ahead of the world in doing that. Our youth festival, Malayali is wherever we go. We compete, we, you know, we create teams, we compete and we love doing youth festivals. Films should be, short films, all kind of filmmaking should come into the uh, domain. Media park, we have info park, techno park, all these things. We should have media park because we have so much talent and workforce in that space. They can actually do wonders if, we, if the government set up something like that. Sensor, we all know, it is outdated. Nowhere else, internet, uh, newspaper, nowhere else it, it is there. Only for movies, they are still clinging on to it. High time it goes, it should go. I think that's all I had to say. Thank you.